what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and today we are coming at you with another live stream and tonight we are taking a look in the Atlantic Division. We've got the Tampa Bay Lightning heading on the road to Toronto to take on the Maple Leafs. Right now it is 3-1 Tampa just over halfway through this hockey game. Thank you so much to a couple of you guys already jumping in here in the chat. Shout out to Morgan, Vegas Golden Knight fan here in the chat. Toe, our Caps fan, Grimmers, and our Calgary Flames fan here in the chat. What's going on, guys? Uh, long time no see to some of you, and welcome back to, to others like Grimmers who were here the other day. Um, so, I mean, I really haven't been watching this game, to be honest with you. Um, I've been doing other stuff, but... If you guys have a synopsis of the game so far between the Leafs and the Lightning, let me know. They're showing Stamkos. He scored a goal, so I guess he comes back home, going to his hometown team in Toronto and scoring a goal. That happens pretty often, so I'm sure this isn't uh, this is a normal this is a normal occurrence for the Leafs fans out there. But uh, yeah, so let's see how things go tonight. Um, so uh, yeah, so what's going on, Toe? So we said after the channel change. I think it's my first time. Yeah, so there's been a lot going on with that whole thing. Um, YouTube took away their their thing with my channel, but I'm definitely shadow banned still because my, I mean, subscriptions is like a, um, they call it a vanity metric. It doesn't really affect the algorithm, um, but I have not gained subscribers in the past two months since it happened in December, I think. So, whatever, it is what it is. As long as I have my core audience, if anybody else jumps in, you know, we've had new people come into the chat. So, you know, people like Grimmers are fairly new. So, it's not necessarily one of those things where, like, I'm completely, nobody else notices me. Um, but it is definitely, my, my outreach is definitely less than it used to be. Yeah, it's nice to see you, Morgan. Hope all is going well out there. Um... And hope you guys are doing well. Yeah, it's been a little while. Um, like I said, there's been a lot of stuff going on. This is my third day in a row of live streaming. I'm trying to do as much as I can with the live streams. You know, trying to catch you guys so that you guys know we are back in live streaming. I don't know if it's always going to be every night like this. But I'm trying to relaunch everything and get you guys back in the rhythm of things. So I'm trying to do it as much as I can. Um... So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So if you guys have any hockey-related questions, let me know down below what you guys think. The playoffs are coming up very soon, so I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on all of that. So of course, in the beginning of our videos, we have to do kind of a recap of everything that we've seen so far tonight. Uh, a couple of games will be finishing up shortly, uh, specifically this game and the Devils and Rangers, so we'll get to that in a minute. So right now it's 3-1 Tampa in Toronto. Um... Toronto's on a on a power play right now. It's 3-1 Lightning. Uh, a little bit further south, down in Madison Square Garden, uh, the Rangers and the Devils are tied at two. Now, what's interesting about that game right now, of course, the big storyline is right at puck drop. There was a five fight. Uh, there was basically a line a line fight. Um, everybody paired off, and at center ice. We saw a nice big fight. Of course, we saw Matt Rempe and Curtis McDermott drop the gloves at center ice. That was the highlighted fight of the game. Um, but so far, that's been a pretty interesting game because the Devils, uh, despite basically getting outshot by the Rangers 2-1, to one, the Rangers have 21 shots, the Devils have 10. We still have a tied game at 2 right now. So I don't know what's going on there. I assume Jonathan Quick was starting for the Rangers, but that is really interesting to see how things have gone there. Of course, we have three other games on tap tonight. Two starting at 9.30. The Oilers continue their, wet, their little road trip in the Central Division, taking on the Dallas Stars. The Seattle Kraken are out in Hollywood taking on the Los Angeles Kings. That's also at 9.30. And then the late game tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern time is the Vancouver Canucks heading down to Mullet Arena to take on the Coyotes.
Uh, Grimmer said, can we watch the Flames versus Jets? We'll see what happens. Um, I don't even see that on here. I don't know if that's tonight. Flames and Jets? And yes, um, Morgan, take Toe's advice. Take Toe's advice. That's exactly what I would say. It's all good, brother. So the Leafs really need a goal here. They're down by two. And it doesn't look like they're going to get one on the power play. There's three seconds left, but... It would have been nice to see the Leafs and Lightning play again in the first round. I don't think we're going to get that though. It kind of seems like um kind of seems like these are going to be the 2 and 3. I mean the uh the 3 and 4 in the Atlantic. There's a very slight chance that the Leafs somehow maybe get home ice advantage, but it doesn't seem likely. This is a big game, though, because right now the Leafs are six points ahead of the Lightning. If the Lightning win this game, now that's four points back. And, the that like I said, because the Lightning are getting two points, that means the Leafs aren't. So if the Lightning win this in regulation, they would be only four points back of third place in the Atlantic. Which could be a good matchup, because you'd probably rather play the Rangers or Hurricanes... I would guess than potentially one of Boston or Florida. I don't know. I think it's kind of one of those things where you just want to get in. It doesn't really matter who it is. Just make sure you get to the dance right. And you're not really worried about home ice advantage here. Because with where the Lightning and the Leafs are, it's just so unlikely they are able to make up that much ground to get home ice. But... Just make sure you get to the playoffs first. I think that's the most important thing. So yeah, it's nice seeing a bunch of you in here. Yeah, so Morgan, uh, I am going to say, um, I would I would try to move on, brother. Um, this isn't what this channel is about, but just from personal, personal advice, I, I would say, Morgan, I would move on, brother. And I'll leave it at that. Uh, and shout out to 38 Grimmers. He wants the shout out. I'll give it to you. You've been a big supporter here the last couple of days. So thank you to Grimmers and the rest of you, of course.
Yeah, Grimmers, don't do that, buddy. We don't do that around here, all right? I appreciate you, but um, that's not cool, man. So Vegas and Edmonton might be the series to watch. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So uh, Morgan probably doesn't know the details of the whole situation. There's been a big problem with the Oilers. I made a video the other day talking about about how the Oilers are kind of not the team that everybody thinks they are, right? And why I think they'll fail again during the playoffs. And um, it's one of those things where people, they, they tend to forget very quickly, right? The Oilers are playing well. But they forget what we've seen during the McDavid era. And I've had so much hate on that video. It's actually funny. I've gotten a lot of... I mean, I think that video has a thousand views. Um, which is really good. But man, Oilers Nation really came after me. Because I just... I've seen this story from the Oilers before. I've believed in them before. And they always have let me down. So until they prove that they can go on a cup run and legitimately like be a legit cup contender... I'm not going to believe it. You know, Grimmers, all good. I appreciate your support. I just didn't like, I don't like that stuff. Just, we're going to try and, I'm usually pretty fair with everybody, but um, just don't, just don't disrespect me or the chat. That's it. That's all I ask from you guys. All right. We're all cool. So this is another game where the Leafs are basically doubling the shots on the Lightning, but the Lightning have the 3-1 lead. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, again, it's the same issues here for the Leafs, right? Like, And what's funny is a lot of the, the Oilers fans were saying they're like comparing the Oilers to the Leafs. And they're like, yeah, look how good the Leafs are. And I'm like, you realize the Leafs are like the epitome of teams that make the playoffs and cannot win in the postseason, right? It's hysterical. Yeah, and that's why, guys, some people ask me why I don't swear on the channel and stuff like that. I'm not sure how old all of you guys are. I know Toe is a little bit older, but yeah, we got guys like Morgan, um... We had a young lady in here the other night during the Islanders stream. So, like, that's why I try not to curse on the channel because we do have younger subscribers on the channel. So, that's why I always say to you guys, you know, be respectful in the chat, things like that. Because when we do have younger people here, I don't want them seeing the, uh, you know, the language and stuff like that. So... So two and a half minutes left, 3-1 Tampa. So guys, I know Grimmers recommended the Flames, but the Flames aren't playing tonight. What do you guys want to watch during the intermission? Because I think that we could watch the Devils Rangers, but I think they're going to go into intermission basically the same time as... Oh, that was a nice save. That was close. And the Devils take the lead. Nico Hishier's 25th of the season. And despite... Being, despite having half the shots, only 12 shots on net for the Devils, they have a 3-2 to two lead, and they have a power play. So I'm going to assume that the Rangers challenge that, and now it looks like the Devils are on the power play. Wow. We might be watching the wrong game tonight, guys. Why do you always wear a hat? 
Honestly, I didn't do my hair. I was taking a nap earlier today, and my hair is a mess. And I'm really, like, if my hair is not on point, like, gelled and slicked back, I do not like not wearing a hat. So, there you go. That's, that's to answer your question there, Grimmers. <laughs> He's bald. <laughs> I should have just stuck with that. What's going on, PJ? Welcome to the chat, our member here of Gold Line Hockey. Thank you so much, PJ. Huge supporter for a long time. He's been through a lot with this channel. And he is also my uh, fellow knight in shining armor. Me and uh, PJ have been fighting off Oilers Nation the past couple of days. And yes, of course, he is our... Uh, very, very big Oilers fan here in the chat. So shout out to PJ. PJ, we were just talking about that, actually, the whole thing with the Oilers. Because the big topic is, you know, in there's there's a likely scenario, probably not, maybe not in the first round, but maybe in the second or third round, seeing the Oilers and Golden Knights in the playoffs again. I think that's going to be a great playoff series if we do get that. But I don't know. I think that... I just think Vegas has more guys that have that clutch ability than the Oilers. I, that, that's just what I've seen. From what I've seen on the ice, that's it. And yeah, people are saying, dude, the regular season, they're doing so good. Dude, this, that. The regular season is a totally different season than the playoffs. And every single one of you that watches hockey knows what I'm talking about. Hence the Boston Bruins last season, right? Everything they did last season, President's Trophy winning, one of the most dominant teams in the regular season, lost in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So there you go. And what's going on, Tristan? Just got in here. Did you see the Devils versus Rangers line brawl? Yes, Tristan, I did. That was really, that was pretty cool. I have to admit, I wish I watched it like when it was happening, like in person or live, at least on TV. But I did see the replays. It's all over social media because, of course, anything with Rempe, uh, Matt Rempe, is going to be a big deal. And I, that's been a little bit of a feud. Apparently, Curtis McDermott signed something from a Devils fan. Uh, actually, no, it was the other way around. Matt Rempe signed a like a it was like a photo with Rem with McDermott on the ground. And he signed it. So I think Devil's Nation and I think that got back to McDermott and he was kind of disappointed. He was he felt like disrespected. You know, he's on the ice injured, and here's Matt Rempe signing a picture of him on the ice, you know, hurt. So I don't think that went to over too well with the Devils, and I think they wanted to address that as quickly as possible. So uh, if the Oilers get bounced in the first or second round, I'm going to that video and tagging all those Oilers fans. PJ, please do. And you know what? I remember very similar last year, I said something very similar about the Dallas Stars, how the Dallas Stars are too old, and yeah, they seem to be having a good regular season, but the playoffs are different and this and that. Dallas fans got all over me. The Dallas Stars are going to win this series. What are you talking about? There's no way they lose this series. And they lost. And they all of a sudden, all those bur all those boo birds that were chirping me down there in Dallas, all of a sudden went super quiet when they got eliminated. So we'll see what happens here. We'll see if, you know, the iron strikes again here. I've been right in the past. You know, if you make enough predictions, you can be right sometimes. But listen, if the Oilers are able to do it, that would be great. I just, I think it would be even more funny if they didn't. And now we're seeing a little bit of rough stuff here. Of course, Hedman in the middle of it. Um, Kev, you think the Caps can surprise and steal around in the Puffs? I like that you said that, the Puffs. They can shut teams down pretty well. So I really haven't been watching the Capitals as much as I'd like to, um, Toe. But I will admit, the fact that Ovechkin has turned it on and is going, that is huge. Because we know how the Capitals are. When Ovechkin's on his game playing really well, that is the difference maker. And they have some good pieces there in Washington. They need good goaltending and everything else. But you need Ovi. You need Ovi. You need the lightning rod to get things going. And he is back. And that's really, really nice to see. So I think they are. I think the two teams right now that honestly scare me the most in the Eastern Conference, as weird as this sounds, you know, the Florida Panthers had a bad last week. 
the Bruins have been okay. They've been hanging in there. They've been, you know, they have. They're going to have over a hundred points, so they're doing something right. Um, but honestly, the Hurricanes have been on a tear. They haven't lost back-to-back -back games in 2024, if I'm not mistaken, unless it's changed this week. And then the Capitals, who have stormed all the way back, basically left for dead in January, now are pretty much the team in the wild card spot. You probably don't want to play them as a wild card team right now. And at this point, they look like they might be taking that third spot in the Metro because the Flyers and the Islanders have kind of fallen off on their own. So, so many wins and one goal games. Yeah, and that's a good point too, especially in the playoffs. That stuff matters. I hope the Flames keep talking, uh, keep tanking so they can get a higher pick in the draft. Yeah. And then I saw some stuff from the Islanders today, some Islander boards. They were saying, as an Islander fan, a lot of people were saying, I'm not necessarily going to put myself in this conversation, but the Islanders fans would rather miss the playoffs than get spanked by the Rangers in the first round. And that's kind of a sad way of looking at it, but I think a lot of teams are kind of like that, right? Like, you know, like Calgary, right? Calgary knows. If they somehow miraculously made the playoffs, they're not. But let's just say they did, they would get smacked in the first round. So it would be better for them to at least get the opportunity of drafting a lottery pick in the top three than just wasting another year, getting just completely slept in the first round of the playoffs. It doesn't do you any good. You would have been better off. You're in, being in the middle, that mediocre team, is the worst spot because it's so hard to improve the team without drafting high. And you're also just in a state of perpetual failure in the playoffs. And that is a really dangerous position to be in. But it happens to everybody. Imagine Caps versus Kuznetsov and Orlov in the first round. That would be really nice. And I think that could happen. If it stands right now, the Rangers hold down the top spot. They take on one of the wild cards, right? And then... Which, that could set up for a great playoff series. The Flyers and the Rangers. I know the Rangers have been kicking the Flyers' ass during the regular season. So that might be a tough series for the Flyers. But Flyers, Rangers, and then Caps, Hurricanes in the first round for the, the Metro spots. Give that to me every day of the week. I am, I'm taking every bit of that in my veins. Absolutely. Stars forward core is scary this year, and they're getting hot at the right time. Yeah, I think Dallas is going to be good. I look at all those teams in the Central. I look at Winnipeg, maybe not so much because they're they're kind of going a little bit cold here the last couple of days, uh, the last couple of weeks. But Colorado, Dallas, and Nashville. Nashville is hot on everybody's heels there in the Central Division. That is a team the island. my Islanders are playing Saturday. I am not looking forward to it. Nashville is really, really good. They're on a three-game losing streak right now. But before that, I think they had a six, a six or seven-game winning streak, an eight-game winning streak, all in 2024 since February. So, praise the Lords. Nashville is another team you really got to watch for in that Central Division out in the Western Conference. Imagine second round Caps versus Flyers. That would be funny, right? Just to knock out the Rangers and Hurricanes. That would probably kill a lot of people's brackets, including mine. But we'll see. Once we get a little closer, I'll probably get an idea of where my bracket's going to be. But um, we're going to do the bracket challenge again. So stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You're in the community. Um, because I will be setting up a bracket challenge again. And I think we did that last year. Um, so we will definitely be doing that. Again, yo, we got a super chat, $7 Canadian from PJ, of course, our member here at the channel. He says, Kez, uh, Kev, if you were the Flames GM, what moves would you make this offseason to make the team more competitive? So I kind of talked about this the other day, and I don't know. One of you guys likes Kuzmenko. It might have been Grimmers or PJ. I don't know. One of you guys. I don't. I think they're going to trade Kuzmenko this summer. I know. I know. It's not ideal. But I think they're going to keep Mangiapane. They're going to keep Mangiapane. They're going to move on from Kuzmenko. And there's a couple of other like middling defensive players that they might. Or defensemen they might have to figure out. Um, but I'd love to know your guys take on that. 
Um, I could see them trading Markstrom. I think Jacob Markstrom is probably a little upset with the way things went at the deadline. He was going to the Devils, signed off to a trade there, then didn't get traded. Like, I think there's a little bit of bad blood there. So, we'll see what happens between now and the summer. Maybe Markstrom isn't upset about it and doesn't care. But I would have to think that that might be a problem going into the summer. And he's thinking, yeah, I, I, think, I've, I think I'm done here. But we'll see. So that is what I would do, PJ, and thank you for the super chat. You're the best. I wanted Kuzmenko to the Caps, a perfect fit. Imagine that, right? So they get rid of Orlov, they got rid of um, of Kuznetsov. They have Ivan Mareznichenko, Alex Ovechkin, and Andre Kuzmenko. That would be pretty good. And they also have a defenseman, I think. Do they have a defenseman that's... Um, that's Russian. Is Fayavari Russian? I don't remember. You Okay, so PJ's hoping it's the other way. He hopes Mangiapane gets traded. Watch the Blue Jays game? No, Grimmers. We're not going to watch baseball. We're watching hockey, man. I don't know. I just think that Mangiapane, yeah, he had a rough season this year, but that's why you might not want to trade him. His value is going to be lower. I don't know. Alexiev. Thank you, Tom. That's who I meant. Alexander Alexiev. I know a lot of the Capitals players, not even because of the Caps, because I watched the Hershey Bears. And uh, shout out to the Bears. They clinched the Atlantic Division last night. I believe they clinched first place in the entire American Hockey League. So, the Hershey Bears, they're going for a repeat. They won the Calder Cup last year, and I may or may not be taking another trip up to Hershey this spring for a playoff game. And I actually went to, I believe it was Game 5 or Game 6 in Chocolate Town last year in the Calder Cup Final. I saw Shane Wright in person. I'm trying to remember who else was there. Uh, I'm trying to remember who was on that Coachella Valley team. Um, but, yeah, shout out to them, so... That's how I know a lot of these guys like Alexiev, Fairvari, um, Iorio, um, all those guys. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Toe knows what I'm talking about. They are killing it. And they're the one team that I have that's actually good. Um, the, Jet, the New York Jets are not good. The New York Mets are not good. They're already 0-4, and, and we're only four games into the baseball season. The Islanders are the Islanders. Most of you guys understand the situation around that. So I don't have a team that wins. So the Hershey Bears are like the closest thing I have to that. So. But um, yeah, so let me know what else you guys want to talk about here in terms of tonight's schedule, the standings. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I mean, what's crazy right now it's kind of a three-headed race right now for for, for the, the President's Trophy. So the Rangers right now, if the season ended today, 104 points for the Rangers. They currently sit at the top. The Bruins and the Stars each have 103 points. So we'll see how things kind of unravel there. Yeah, Toe and Scarbosa. Michael Scarbosa, absolutely. The Jets made some nice moves. I saw they signed the, um, oh man, you guys are going to kill me. Who's the guy they just signed from the Eagles? Reddick or Redding or something? Red, I think it's Hassan Reddick. I think that's his name. That's the only one I know that the Jets have really done. P Alexi Protis, Connor McMichael, Hendricks Lapierre. Yes, yes, Toe. You're getting me in the feels here with all these Hershey Bear guys. And they also have some of the best jerseys in hockey. Between the NHL, in Europe, everything. They have some of the best jerseys. That chocolate and white is unbeatable. So looking at the playoff picture right now. So the Flyers got back to the third spot in the Metro last night. So they have 83 points. The Caps have 82. But they've also played two less games than the Flyers. So they're one point back of the Flyers, but they have two games in hand. So theoretically, that could be four points right there for the Caps, which would put them a lot further up in the standings. 
The Islanders have played 75 games, and they have 81 points. So the Islanders are two points back of the Flyers with one game in hand, which, theoretically, if the tiebreaker, the, the Flyers have more regulation wins. The Islanders have 33 regulation wins. The Flyers have 36. So the tiebreaker, even if points were the same, the Flyers would get in over the Islanders. So we'll see. The Red Wings are still hanging on. They have 82 points. The Penguins, as crazy as this sounds, I thought the Penguins were left for dead. They have 79 points. They're three points back of a playoff spot, and they are on a three-game winning streak, I think. They beat the Devils last night. They beat the Rangers the other night, and I believe they beat somebody before that Rangers game. I'm forgetting who they beat. So the, the Penguins are still alive and on, a, and on a winning streak. So we'll see how things end up there, but... That's definitely a team to still watch. And yo, we got a super chat. My girlfriend Angela could not get outdone. $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Ange. And of course, number one fan, of course. You have some competition though, Ange. Uh, PJ's up there. Uh, Toe is up there. We got some OGs in the chat tonight, but I gotta admit, Ange is still up there, so. Thank you so much, as always. And she's in a good mood because the Rangers, which is her team, are doing quite well right now. Even though tonight they're not playing their best. So thank you to all of you in the chat. We have a pretty good turnout today pretty nice guys thank you so much for joining us taking the time out of your very valuable day to come here watch a live stream talk some hockey talk some shop i really do appreciate that guys thank you thank you thank you very much and um oh no pj i'm number one fan i defend kev in the comments nothing beats that that's true that is true pj but she also gets me Taco Bell on the way home from work at midnight. Oh, that's tough. That's tough, PJ. The Taco Bell thing. Ooh, you guys are right there. You guys are neck and neck for number one fan. Defending me in the comment section and getting me Taco Bell are the ways to my heart. And you guys have both done that. And that's true. So... <laughs> That's funny Toe mentions that. Toe changed his name. Yeah, it was Toe, Toe Hejarmo or something. And and the reason Toe has that name, he's from Finland, I believe, right? You're Finnish? So our Finnish Capitals fan here at Goal Line Hockey. And if any of you are from any other like non-North American nation, let me know down below. Because I love seeing the support from overseas. I think that is so freaking cool. And uh, at this point, Toe is our only international subscriber and supporter here at Gold Line Hockey. So he holds that flag right now, and uh, he's the only one there. Toe, or, I cannot pronounce that Toe. That, that's why I called you Toe, because that is like impossible to, uh, that is an impossible name to say. I'm so sorry, Toe. Toe Tora Moju? I'm definitely butchering that. I feel bad saying it wrong, but... And what's going on, Mitchell White? I missed the first two periods. Other than the score, what did I miss? You missed two line brawls. Ryan Reeves got hurt. No, I'm kidding, Mitchell. But, um, so, to be honest, I didn't watch the entire game, too. We've been kind of going with this. So, if anybody could help out Mitchell in the chat, just to give an update. Uh, Victor Hedman got the first goal of the game. His 13th of the season. Matthews tied the game with a power play goal. That was it. 1-1 one, one after 1. Then Braden Point scored. Steven Stamko scored. Of course, the hometown boy has to score in Toronto. And it's 3-1 Lightning. Shots right now, though, might surprise you. Uh, the shots are 25 for the, the Leafs. 14 for the Lightning. So a pretty good showing by the Leafs. They've gotten some power plays. They just haven't been able to really convert. And that's kind of where things are at in this game. So we'll see how things continue the rest of the way. Um, and yo, we got a super chat. 
from PJ again, $7 Canadian. Nothing makes me more mad than when I go to a Flames game and the flame and the fans who leave the rink early, even though the Flames will be winning, like, come on. That's a problem with the Islanders fans, too, because people are so worried about traffic that they leave the game early. Thank you for that comment, PJ. Thank you for the super chat. You're the best. Hopefully, Ange didn't see that, me blowing you a kiss, but uh, it's well-deserved. Yeah, Mitchell says, shot count doesn't surprise me. Yeah, that's that's kind of how this goes. And what's funny is, um, I don't know if you're a Lightning or a Leafs fan, Mitchell, but in the Devils-Ranger game, it's a very similar, it's a similar story. It's 3-2 Devils, but I think the Devils only have a dozen shots, and the Rangers have like 30. But they're losing the game. It's that kind of thing. That's how hockey is sometimes. It's about the quality of opportunities, not always the amount of shooting that you do. And the other thing is, too, the more shots you get, sometimes the goalie gets into a rhythm. So if he's getting 40, 50 shots, everyone's like, oh, my God, he saved 40 or 50 shots. He stays in a rhythm. And that allows him to kind like he doesn't get cold. He doesn't go five or ten minutes without getting a shot. And sometimes that first shot after five or ten minutes of just sitting there, that really is kind of what screws up the goalie. I can't imagine leaving a game early. Go Bolts. There you go. So Mitchell, our Lightning fan, here in the chat. And here we go. Here we go. So here's the OGs coming up with some of my references. So some of you guys might not get some of the references here. But I live um, in New York. And... Um, and I and whenever you guys ask about going into New York City and things like that, it is and of course he has to pronounce it wrong. It's S B A R R O Sparrow Pizza. Do not go there. It is it is B S Pizza. You go to a family run pizza place. You do not go to those stupid Sparrows. And when I went to a couple of games last week, I've been going to the city. I saw the Sparrow's Pizza and I was thinking of you guys. I was like, yeah, I told everybody not to go to Sparrow Pizza. So, shout out to PJ for remembering that. Tampa often trails lately on the shot count. But Mitchell, you know what? If they're winning the games, that's all that matters, right? You got to win the hockey games. And Tampa is pretty good at that. Over the last couple years, they know how to win hockey games. So, except game six against the New York Islanders at Nassau Coliseum. But I'm sure you don't remember that part. You probably remember everything after that. Um, which I'm sure you'll you'll rip me apart for because I am an Islanders fan, Mitchell. So, of course, there's a little bit of bad blood between me and the Islanders and your Lightning. But I got to admit, though, if it probably I I, I this is how I kind of cope with those Islander runs. If it weren't for the Tampa Bay Lightning, I think the Islanders might have had a cup in there because Tampa was just that damn good in what was it 2020 and 2021. Oh, the Islanders were so freaking close. PJ is a Finn. PJ as a Finn, I have no clue what either of those things are. Oh, yeah, so PJ, oh, okay. So Toe, so pizza, do you know what pizza is? I don't know if they have pizza in Finland. You know, you guys are funny. Um, yeah, pizza, if you look up a picture of pizza, you probably get a pretty good idea. But basically, Sparrow Pizza is a franchise of pizza. And it's kind of like, it's BS pizza. And it's so overpriced especially in the city if you're gonna pay the stupid price for pizza just get legit like mom and pop store or mom and pop run company pizza that's your best bet but um that's not what the stream is about pj's just trying to throw me off here i know what he's doing so toronto has had 53 shot attempts 24 saves for vasilevsky and then one goal so I don't know really what's going on with Tampa's shooting. Their barometer's a little bit off. They have to fine-tune that a little bit. 53 shot attempts, only 24 shots. Got to pick that up. What? That's right. Okay. Fine. All right, so PJ, shots fired. I don't know if you have an answer to this one, but uh, 
Yeah, Ange is wearing the goal line hockey merch right now. So that might that's the tiebreaker for right now, PJ. Oh, you do have Pizza Hut in Finland. That's interesting. I didn't know they had stuff like that overseas. Kind of cool. All right, so the third period is underway. Oh, my God. Tampa almost scored right away. Of course, he takes up the whole bed. So let's see what happens here between the blue and white teams in the Atlantic. Third period of action. The Rangers aren't doing good. That's why I'm not watching. I'm going to bed. They gave up three goals on 12 shots. I'm going to bed. Okay. You do that then. Okay. PJ said, I heard food prices are insane at MSG. How much was that sandwich, the sandwich you got? $24. And what was that? Prime rib sandwich. A beer is $18. Yeah. Yeah, the prices are ridiculous. But also at UBS, they're kind of stupid. I think they're actually more yeah. expensive at UBS. They're similar. You get more food at MSG. Yeah, food. yeah. Yeah, it is bad, PJ. I think that's just New York is like... I know that's a problem for Vancouver and Toronto, too. Kind of fitting, right? Like, the bigger metro cities tend to have problems with super overpriced stuff. Yeah, everything is insane at MSG. Yeah, they have a... What is it called? You the sandwich. The sandwich. Prime rib sandwich? Prime rib sandwich. And it's like $24. But it's enough for two people. For a sandwich. It is a big sandwich. And, yeah, there's you get a lot for it. But still, $24 for a sandwich... You could buy a whole thing of cold cuts and, and sandwiches and make your own for like a week for that much. But. And then PJ said, at the Saddle Dome, I can get three beers for 20 bucks. Okay, 20 bucks Canadian. But still, that's crazy. Also, you have to remember the venue. When the Islanders were at the Coliseum, the the discounts on food, like the food prices were way cheaper at the Coliseum. It's also the venue. So like the Saddle Dome, I know the situation a little bit there. That, that's probably part of the reason the prices are the way they are. That's crazy. I used to fly from Connecticut to Tampa to watch games and it was still cheaper than catching a game at MSG. That's that's wild. I believe it though, absolutely. So here come the Leafs. Let's see if they could do anything here. Reeves coming down. Uh oh. Oh Tampa's defense is just so good. Like I'm I, I'm jealous. I'm sure Mitchell just sits here and is like, ah, we have a two goal lead. We're probably gonna win this game, right? He's saying there's a fight. What are you talking? Oh, Tanner Janot and Ryan Reeves, center ice. Okay. Thank you for the heads up there, Mitchell. I don't think this. Oh man, this isn't gonna go well for Janot. Reeves got him right away. He popped him. Oh man, this isn't good. This isn't good. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. Jano oh. is going, though. Took off Reeves' helmet. Oh, oh. And Reeves knocks down Jano. There we go. All right. I give Jano credit, though. That is one tough... That is one tough dude right there. Wow. Shout out to Tanner Janot. I know what Reeves is capable of. He did what he had to do, but Janot, man, pretty nice. Hmm. 
No. In Canada, they buy their milk in bags. Like, they don't have gallons like we have gallons. Yeah. It's in a, like a, like a bag, like a plastic bag, and they put it in, like, a container. What does the KN mean? Oh, coming in bags. Oh, okay, now that makes more sense. Wow, so toe throwing shade from across the water. Wow. Well, I think, yeah, so PJ, so is that a thing that in Canada you get your it milk is. in a bag? Is that true? It is, I've been there. PJ's got to answer it for us here. Toe's calling you out, PJ. Yeah, honestly, Mitchell, I think Jano handled himself really well there. That is one tough cookie. I got to turn that off. That happens too often. I got to remember to do that. I've seen it. No, it is not. Okay, so so maybe that, I don't know, because Angela is saying that it does. So, I don't know, maybe it's not where, maybe it's not in... In like Alberta, because I assume I assume PJ's in Alberta, right? You're from um, you're from Calgary. Look. Why are they doing that? But that's how they sell it there. That's so weird. Yeah, I, t I tell you're definitely you're factual. I just don't know if where PJ's at. They have that. It's more environmentally friendly. It's oh my. Plastic. That's that's such a Canadian thing. I don't know if PJ's a part of that, but oh, that's crazy. That's such a Canadian thing, though. I don't know if I don't think PJ's a part of that, but that is funny. Wow. In Alberta, the demand for bag milk does not exist. That's what, that's what Google says. So the demand for bag milk isn't there. Is not there. It is in everywhere else. That's so weird. Okay, he loves his cartons. Okay, all right. Moving to Texas. Hell yeah, PJ. Our milk comes in cardboard like cans. That's interesting. I didn't know that. That's a, but he's from Finland. And of course, we got, uh, I don't know what's going on exactly. Oh, man. Yeah, see, they're definitely, they're, somebody's trying to draw a penalty. You could see there's a little bit of tripping here and there from both teams. There's somebody trying to get a power play. It's a little bit of holding by the Leafs. 3-3, Rangers. They tied it? So there you go. So we got an update. So the Rangers, Capo Caco. They were giving... The, every fan, it seems like, was talking shit about him, right? When we were there, I think every... There were so many Ranger fans all over Capo Caco. And now he's got a couple of goals here recently. I'm sure they're not complaining about him now. So tie game at the Garden. So we'll see what happens there. I'm hoping there's enough time left in the game to watch that one, but I don't know if we're going to. You know what? If Tampa scores again and makes it 4-1, maybe we will go to that game. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Kasperi Kapanen, you're from the birthplace of Kapanen. That's pretty cool. Kimo Timonen, all right. So PJ with a great question. Thoughts on Noah Dobson and what you see him being for the Islanders in the future? He's had a really rough season. I feel really bad, honestly. Um, there's a couple guys I was hoping would have breakout seasons like Oliver Wallstrom and Noah Dobson. It... It just didn't go anywhere for either of them. I mean, definitely less so for Wallstrom. He's, like, basically benched at this point. Um, but, yeah, rough year for Dobson. I think the entire Islanders' defense has been bad. Pellick's been bad. 
Pollock's been bad. Honestly, the best defensemen on the Islanders, are, or at least for what I expect from them, are from probably Bortuzzo and Riley, which is kind of weird. But that they've actually played fairly well for what they're supposed to do, at the very least. If I ever go to MSG, I will throw a Ranger jersey in the trash. I want to be there, PJ. I'll be there to back you up. So it looks like the Lightning are going on the power play. There you go. Yeah, Sheldon Keefe does not look too thrilled, as he probably should be. What, the Ranger game? Honestly, I kind of hope the, the Leafs score again here just to make it 3-2, just so it's a little bit interesting. Yeah, so Mitchell, yeah, I'm hoping the Rangers lose... Um, I would rather face the Rangers in round one than Boston. Yeah, I, I'm so... T I See, we were talking about this earlier, Mitchell. It's so hard to, like... You want to pick who you want to play in this and that. Like, so much can change, right? Like, two weeks ago, who would have believed that the Flyers weren't going to make the playoffs? And then, who was sitting here saying that the Red Wings would still be in the running? Like... Things change so quickly. Just worry about punching your ticket in and then worry about, all right, well, we want home ice advantage. Well, we want this. Well, we want that. I mean, theoretically still, Mitchell, the Lightning, in a weird way, if they win tonight, could still get home ice advantage. I believe they'd be four points back of the, the Leafs for third. Actually, no, no, not home ice advantage. They could get third in the division, which would mean that they could play whoever is the second spot, whether that's Florida or Boston. Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird... That's a tough spot. Any of those wildcard teams, that's going to be brutal because you have to play either the Rangers or the Bruins or Carolina or Florida. Any of those four teams, I wouldn't want to play right now. I, I sincerely... Whoever has to play Carolina in the first round, I am already... I'm sending prayers to you because I think Carolina is going to go on a run this year. They do this every year. But Rod Brendamore has that team in some kind of weird, um, like, possessive mode right now. They are, they are a team that's on a mission. They are possessed. You look at some of their pending UFAs and RFAs, Caroline is trying to get it done this year. And they're in a situation where the Rangers look slightly vulnerable, which sounds stupid because they already they look like they could win the President's Trophy. But then they've played the last couple games they've played. So now I'm like, I, I don't know. It's going to be really weird how things go this final like two weeks of the season. Because between teams that are in the playoffs that might not make the playoffs. And I think the Western Conference is pretty much set. But the East, there's still two or three teams that are going to be really disappointed at the end that they didn't make the playoffs. And um, whether that's the Islanders... Capitals, Flyers, Red Wings, the Lightning are in the playoffs, I think. But any of those Metro teams, it seems like, are still very much in play. So. The team that honestly looks the least threatening to me is the Pacific. I think the Pacific Division, I mean, yeah, Edmonton's good during the regular season. They're good. And then, like, even Vegas, and I know Morgan's not here still, but, like, Vegas is kind of, I don't know, I like them, then I don't like them. I don't know, it's it's Vegas, so it's hard for me to bet against them, but they've been playing a little bit better recently, but they're still, like, I don't know, people are like, oh, well, they're not the top of the division. Well, they suck. That's not true. Just because they're not winning the Pacific Division doesn't mean they're a bad team. And, you know, L.A., I don't know. They don't really scare me that much. Vancouver really doesn't scare me because they're Vancouver. 
but who knows, they could pull another 2020 where they go to the Western Conference Finals. And Dr. Demko has a Vesna type season during the playoffs. Who knows? But I, I don't know. I think it's going to be one of those, the, really the four teams in the Central that is a real threat in the Western Conference. Um, if the Oilers lose in the second round again, do you see Dreisaitl going somewhere else? I honestly think it's going to take a lot for Dreisaitl to leave. I don't know. It's a weird thing with Dreisaitl. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to. If 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 Gretzky can get traded, anybody can get traded or moved. I don't know. I think something would have to go really catastrophically wrong in negotiations for Dreisaitl to not come back. But we'll see. Tampa versus Florida is always fun. That would be a great series. Yes. Um, but then again, you need Tampa to get, you probably more likely than not, you need Tampa to get into that third spot. But then again, if Florida wins the division and Tampa stays as the first wild card, or maybe they become this, nah, see, that's the thing. That's not likely to happen. More likely it would have to be Tampa and Florida being second and third seed in the division. But what else do you guys got? I don't think the Devils are going to let that. They need two points. It's not the type of game where they're both like, all right, let's just take the point. I think they're both like, we want this game. I don't, they're going to be more aggressive. It might, but you saw the game we went to against, <laughs> bless you. You saw the game we went to against the Panthers. They didn't lighten up. So. I love how PJ keeps saying that. Nugget Hopkins. He had a clear cap space. And that's the thing, too. What if Edmonton, the Edmonton side, says, yeah, we want a clear cap space, so we're going to move on from dry Dreisaitl. Maybe. I don't know. That was a great chance for Bertuzzi. So Mitchell said, what's your thoughts on Stamkos' future? I have to think with the negotiation side of it, this has to hurt Stamkos because I think, I truly think Stamkos wants to stay a, a member of the Lightning. Wild Damn it, what the hell is going on I in that game? Know. You're watching the wrong one. I just always do Devils and Rangers because I'm always watching those teams. So it's it's hard. And this is what they picked. They picked this in the morning. I left it up for them to decide. Actually, no, I didn't today. I didn't let them pick today. Oh, yeah, so the Stamkos thing, it's really hard because I, I think Tampa's going to move on from him because they realize just the salary cap needed, like, it's not going to work. But I think Stamkos is going to be crushed by the offer that they end up giving him. They're going to be like, listen, this is all we can give you, and that's it. And I think Stamkos is going to say, I'm way, I'm worth way more than that. And he's going to, it's basically going to be, it's going to be on his decision, but I think it's going to be really difficult. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if he stays in Tampa. I really don't. But then I thought last time around with the negotiations, he would leave and he stayed. Right? So, who knows? Kevin, it's so sad as a Flames as a Flames to realize that Jonathan Huberdeau will score less points this season than he did last season. Yeah. 
yeah, it's been a rough year for the Flames. Um, I would expect things to get better once Connor Zary's going, Jakob Pelche, and all those guys. But for right now, it's tough. It's definitely tough to uh, to watch Flames games. I really haven't watched them much this year because most of the year, it's been pretty tough to watch, to be honest with you. And um, better luck next year. You know, Hopefully they get a high draft pick. Maybe they win one of the lottery picks. There's a couple really good defensemen in this draft behind Macklin Celebrini. So if they don't get Celebrini, you're going to get probably a really good defenseman in that top 10. Or they go after T. Jaginla. If they end up getting that 10, maybe that 10, that 8 and 15 spot, somewhere between that, they could be going after Iggy. Little Iggy. We'll see. I really like Pelche. Yeah, I agree, Toe. I really like Pelche, too. I mean, he has a great name, but um, yeah, he's a good player, too. And who's the other kid in Calgary that's been making a lot of noise? I forgot his name, but... There's a rookie that's really kind of come onto the scene. I think it's a defenseman, if I'm not mistaken. But he's kind of a tough guy on the Flames. Hopefully, PJ knows who I'm talking about. Hopefully, one of you guys can name it for me. And it's funny you say that, PJ. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Post Postasil, yes, that's the one, PJ. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you got to think like, and here's what I would be thinking, right? If I'm if I'm T. Jaginla, do I want to live in my dad's footsteps or do I want to create my own destiny? Do I want to create my own path? And going to Calgary, you're basically falling right in your dad's footsteps. So maybe he's looking so maybe he's looking to create his own identity, right? So, I mean, with a Ginla on the back, it's going to be difficult to do that any city you go. But maybe that's the the mentality. And the chances of him actually going to Calgary are pretty slim. But you never know. Postasil. I think that's how you pronounce it. What? No, I'm watching this game right now. This is the game I told them I would be watching. Next TV timeout, I'll switch it. That's crazy. So Toe is Toe knows everybody. His brother was playing in my home team, Luco, two years ago. That's insane. And I'm really, as an Islander fan, I'm happy the Penguins are on a, on a little winning streak here because this is hurting their chances of getting Macklin Celebrini, right? Congratulations. Good job, Penguins. You're doing exactly what every fan base wants you to do. Do just enough so you're not a lottery team but miss the playoffs. That's the chef's kiss for most people, right? Unless you're a big Crosby fan, which I get, but he is old, but he is the only reason they're still in it. I just slightly feel bad for Crosby, just ever so slightly. He is carrying the Penguins on his back. And now they have a Duncan commercial. Shit. I don't want to see that. It's making me hungry. I hope Columbus gets Celebrini. Yeah, they could use that. But think about how good their center core is already. They have Sillinger. They have Cole Sillinger. They have Kent Johnson and Macklin Celebrini. Are you kidding me? And I think I'm missing one. I think they already have another guy in there, right? If I remember correctly, I think there's a third one already with the Blue Jackets.
That's true. They did let go of Kekalainen, yeah. I think a lot of that had to do with the young defenseman, right? They, they've they been having problems with calling him up, right? And I think Jarmo Kekalainen didn't want to call him up. I'm trying to remember the kid's name. Who's the kid Columbus drafted like two years ago? The defenseman they drafted in the top ten. Oh, I'm forgetting his name. You guys will remember. I'm terrible with that. Again, Columbus really haven't been watching them this year. There just hasn't been enough of a reason to watch them. You're a check. David, you're a check. Thank you, Tell. Oh, the Leafs came so close. They almost got one. The Rangers did? Nope. They're on the power play, though. Another power play with five minutes left. Who could have guessed? Oh, and there you go. So, Nick Paul. So, guys, let me know down below. Do you guys... So, it's 4-1 to one Tampa. Do we want to watch the end of the Ranger-Devil game? Or do you guys want to stick to this game? Let me know real quick down below. Yeah, Mitchell's happy, of course. See, maybe Mitchell... Maybe you got to watch goal line hockey... Uh, lightning streams because uh, we might be good luck here. So let me know down below, guys. The Devils on the Rangers? Oh, come on! I'm watching the end of that game. That's more of a game than this. Of course. Who could have guessed the Rangers scoring a power play goal with five minutes left? Huh. Almost like I say that in every Ranger video that I talk about. That was five minutes left. Literally every freaking video. It is ridiculous. The Rangers get so many power plays in the final ten minutes of a game. It is disgusting. I'm sorry. It, they score on them, whatever. It's so dumb. Though. They didn't even score it yet on here. You want to see it? I can't. I got to keep it over here. crazy they get so many power play goals and what is going on ali dash welcome to the chat well we just saw it live that one's live now wow it's almost like i have a crystal ball that tells me every game the range to get a power play goal in the final five minutes it's it's wild yes, your dad of course he is yo what's going on ali dash what's going on guys So, 4-3 Rangers, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Typical story. Nothing new here. So, the Lightning have a 4-1 lead over the Leafs. Nick Paul scored to make it pretty much out of reach. And then we're watching right now the Ranger-Devil game, 4-3. Almost like Kevin has this mystical ball where every single every single game, the Rangers get a power play goal in the final five minutes. It's almost like I say that in every video, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy and I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a biased fan that hates the Rangers. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just saying I have it in writing. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, right. Fun fact, Cal McCarr went to the same high school that I went to. Oh, that's pretty sick, PJ. That's right, he's from Canada. I do remember that. But he also played hockey. He played college in the States, right? I think he went to... Did he go to North Dakota or one of those schools or something like that? Oh, and Brendan Smith was in the box. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, I know the Rangers number one in the standings. I know, and it's kind of interesting because really early in the season, they weren't even in a playoff spot. And then they got a, I think they ended up getting a playoff spot in like November, December. And I think they've held down first in the division since January. And they haven't relinquished it at all. 
Yes, Ali Dash, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. Four and four again. Can your ads go away? I gotta do it. It's every six minutes. Ads? Oh, I thought you meant for the stream. I don't see any ads in the stream. Oh my god, PJ. Well, I felt bad. Did you see what Morgan was saying earlier? I stay out of it. Isn't he like 12? He's 16. So 12. He's 16. That's what he's going to want back. That's a tough goal. So four minutes to go. Let's see. A little bit of bonus action today. for first season sweep of the Devils since 2014-15. What's going on, Maytham? What's up? Of course, Ali Dash. Isn't it past his bedtime? Yeah, it's, it's past my bedtime, honestly. You guys keep me up way too late. Wait, isn't he not from here? He's from Ottawa. And they have the same time zone, babe. Uh, same time zone. <laughs> are you sure? Yes. Yeah, Eastern time zone, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at that, though. The shot's 39 to 18. 39 19, okay. Of course, Ali Dash. And welcome to the stream, guys. It's nice to see you both in here tonight. Only 941. It is past my bedtime. <laughs> oh, he's in high school. Okay. See, this is a little gamesmanship. Kakinen is kind of messing with his uh, helmet and stuff. Oh, come on. You got to show this. <laughs> Going to game. That was pretty funny. I'm so pumped for tomorrow. It's chest day. Good for you, PJ. My legs are never not sore. Mm -hmm. I always need mm -hmm. leg massages. My legs it. are brutal. I don't I thought the Rangers scored again. I was like, please don't do this. Not right away. Yours is a minute off. It's two minutes left? Yeah. Oh, man. Someone will let me know, probably. Someone will spoil it. I'm looking right now. Okay. Four and four again. What? For what? <laughs> no, not yet. It doesn't tell me why. For what? It says four and four. Actually, it does on the NHL app. It does say that. Do you do you bench press? No, I actually don't. I don't, PJ. My chest day is... I do a um, complete, like, flat, a flat... Uh, whatever that's called the flat thing and then I just push the dumbbells up and it's all on my chest Bench yes a flat bench. I used to do the incline bench 
And I really screwed up my shoulders, so I don't do that anymore. But... <laughs> That's a good one, Ali Dash. Thank you. So the Leafs game, Ali Dash, it was 4-1 Lightning. Yeah, yeah, so the game's kind of finishing up, but... Yeah, the Leafs kind of looked like booty cheeks, not going to lie, from what I saw. They didn't look... They had a couple chances. Nylander had a chance to tip one in. Bertuzzi had a chance to tip one in. They just couldn't get it done. Oh, my God. I don't know how they missed that. This is, what Kapo, this is the Capo Kakinen the Islanders saw. Unbelievable. Kakinen got a freaking shutout against the Islanders. That was brutal. I should have known better to go to that game. Kev, if I ever come to New York, I'm taking you with me to an Islanders game. I could definitely be a tourist for you. Kind of show, or the, what is that? The tour guide? Not the tourist. Tour You're the tourist. I could be a good tour guide for you with, with the stuff to get. So there you go. Empty net. Yep. Right here. Right Okay. Oh! Oh my god. That was close. Oh, Shesterkin's in. Was he always in or did they pull quick? Because that's concerning. If Shesterkin was in the whole game. Lightning one, two, one. Five, four. It's over. What's going on with Shesterkin? He is not playing that good. You go. You play. No, but I don't get. I'm also not paid to do that. If they can hear him, I swear. He's snoring. Yeah, but he's snoring too close to the mic. It's a Bertuzzi or Domi? I wonder who Toronto picks to re-sign. I hate to say it, they're probably going to pick Domi, right? Domi actually had a pretty good season there, if I remember. I know it didn't start off good, but I think he turned it around pretty quickly. Did they end up winning? Mm -hmm. So that's the wrap-up of our games. At least the first two games here tonight. And it is a 4-3 win for the Rangers. A comeback victory. Wow. Pretty crazy game. Yeah, and Mitchell, yes. Yeah, so the Tampa Bay Lightning, our, our game that we really covered today, um, Tampa with a 4-1 win over the Toronto Maple Leafs up in Toronto. The Rangers, despite being down 3-2, and the Devils only having 12 shots after two periods, the Rangers find a way to come back. They tie the game, and then they get the power play goal with five minutes left. We know the story. It's basically every game that the Rangers win. It, that's how it goes. But nonetheless, the Rangers now, I believe they have 106 points. That is number one in the National Hockey League standings. That is insane. So, we'll see what happens. What else do you guys got in here? They're going to re-sign Klingberg, probably. Thank you again for the Super Chats. Let me just go back to see them. Of course, our members here at the channel. Thank you to our members. If you would like... To become a member today to support the channel, um, that is always an option. 
If not, just joining these streams, liking the video, that's free. That also really helps us out. But thank you to our members. Ange, who's been a member for nine months. PJ, who's also been a member. Thank you to the both of you. You guys really are huge in helping out our community and keeping the lights on. Also, shout out to some of our uh, OGs in the chat. Um, Toe was in here pretty much the entire time. Uh, Grimmers was here earlier. Ali Desh coming in late. Um, PJ, can't miss PJ. And of course, some of our new members, hopefully for many more streams to come. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning fan Mitchell here in the chat. Thank you for joining us and hopefully you guys enjoyed tonight's stream. Uh, yo, we got a super chat from Toe. Two forty nine euro. euro. Guess my favorite Finnish goalie. It has to be. Is it Mika Kiprasov? It's got to be Kiprasov, right? I don't know many Finnish goaltenders. Pekka Rene. It's not Pekka Rene. It's not Kiprasov. Who else could it be? But thank you again for the super chat, Toe. Now I, I need to know, are euros even real money? Well, Ali Desh, I don't know if Canadian dollars are real money either, to be honest. <laughs> even American dollars at this point, as crazy as that sounds. No Kipper. Okay, I'm surprised. Because Ali Desh was talking about Kipper soft, so I guess I was thinking about him. Who else could I throw in there? Who's a Finnish goalie? Is UC Soros Finnish? Who else is a Finnish goalie? You're going to say it, it. Not Herm. Who else could it be? Guys, if you guys know. Sleepy Joe loves the Rangers. Oh, of course he does. Is it Sor? No, it's not Soros. Who else could it be? I'm so bad with Finnish goalies. Not let. Oh, it's not Miko Lettinen. I'm shocked. Anti Niemi. Oh my God. No, it's not Rene. Who is it? I'm trying to think of Finnish goaltenders that it could even be. What about Nidamaki? Could it be Uko Pekka Lukonen, Lek uh, Lankinen? Marcus Nidamaki, was he a, was he Finnish? I'm trying to remember who what goalies could it be? Oh man, you're killing me. I have a complete blank. He's got me. It's not Nidamaki. What other Finnish... Does anybody know any Finnish goaltenders? Mm -hmm. Is Anton Hudobin Finnish? I don't know if he's Finnish or not. Retired in the 2010s. Oh, man. Played for the Wild. Mostly. Oh, no. You can't do this to me. If Urban was here, he would probably know. Urban knows. He's a Minnesota Wild fan. Oh, man. You're going to say it and I'm going to know. That's going to be so frustrating. Nikolai Backstrom. I think Mitchell got it. Is it Backstrom? It is. Yo, shout out to Mitchell, man. He knows his, he knows his stuff. Russians and a Swede. Yeah, see, I wouldn't have even thought of Backstrom because I would think that's Russian. Good stuff, guys. Man, you guys are on it tonight. Hell yeah, Mitchell. Man, he's coming in here and making me look bad. Shout out to Mitchell, man. Mm -hmm. 
So thank you again, guys, for all the, the donations, the conversation, because you guys drive this conversation. This isn't, this isn't a live stream if it's just me sitting here watching the games. It's you guys here starting the conversations, talking to each other. I love how you guys talk to each other in the comment section, on the streams, all that stuff. Uh, the interactiveness on this channel is uh, second bar to none. You guys are the best, and I really do appreciate that. Uh, will Obi pass Gretzky next season? I am hopeful. I think he will do it. It's going to be really tough, though. Uh, the slump that he had earlier this season has made this a lot more difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. And when... When Toe asked the question again, who his favorite goaltender is, it is Nicholas Backstrom. Remember that in the future. Guys, that's going to do it for today. Make sure to like the stream once we are done here to help out the channel, to get more engagement out there. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and good night.